Hey, thought I'd make a quick video on issues I encountered when restoring this Knight KG620 vacuum tube voltmeter. If you search for this, you probably know what a vacuum tube voltmeter is, so we won't get into that. Uh, however, in this case, uh, I picked this guy up on eBay. It was listed as for parts not working. Uh, I found a few problems inside, but let me tell you what I've done to this for my purposes is I've uh, installed new jacks, 4 millimeter banana jacks, and a quarter inch phone jack for the DC volts. And the main reason that I chose the quarter inch phone jack was this nice VTB VTVM probe parts kit uh, from Kilo Kilo 4 Hotel X-Ray Julia. This guy makes these kits, he sells them on eBay. They include some nice probes, uh, the resistor you need, and of course is set up indeed for the quarter inch phone jack like a Heath kit. This one's called the Deluxe Kit. I think it was $15 or $17 or something on eBay. And uh, if you've ever priced up probes for vacuum tube voltmeters, you'll know that that's a pretty reasonable price. Um, it works well with this type of meter because it has separate DC volts and AC volts and ohms down here. The reason you want the separate ones with this kit is it includes two different probes rather than having to have one with a switch to switch back and forth. So this just makes things a little bit easier uh, on me anyway, and maybe not easier to use. So let's take a look in here. So, some things that I, I found, uh, right off the bat, I found a, uh, an electrolytic capacitor that was indeed not necessarily something you want to have in a uh, voltmeter. This guy, old wax and paper electrolytic. In fact, it is bulging a little bit there. So, definitely that guy has to come out and get replaced. This was 20 microfarad, 200 volt. Note that. Uh, I replace it with a 47 microfarad, 250 volt Nichicon. The previous owner had already removed the uh, selenium rectifier and replaced it with a uh, 1 in 4000 series diode. Um, he's the one that burned this up here. I uh, put the diode in some heat shrink and brought it over here to the transformer through this heat shrink um, because the last guy again had destroyed some traces on the bottom of the board. Uh, I think this will work great though. Uh, I ended up having to replace only one resistor was out of spec here. This 100 ohm guy here. And I also installed a fuse on the AC line. Uh, these inline fuses may not be the absolute best choice, but I'd rather have a fuse than not. Uh, and there was no fuse protection at all before. Um, don't make the mistake of removing this capacitor in here. Um, I initially thought, oh, it's another wax paper capacitor, and I saw 0.1 microfarad, couldn't see the volts, clipped it out. Well, it is actually a ceramic uh, cased capacitor up to 1.6 kilovolts. It's, the, I believe, the AC coupling capacitor for the AC line. So I had to uh, add some new leads to that and extend it. So don't clip that guy out unless you know it's bad or you want to replace it for some reason and have the high voltage um, cap. I think it's 0 0.01 at uh, 1.6 kilovolts. I did not have that. So I put in the quarter inch phone jack and the banana jacks here. I also cleaned all of the wafer switches with contact cleaner. I have this um, aviation grade contact cleaner that a plain mechanic gave me. It works quite well. Um, then I lube it with this CRC226. That's two different steps. Uh, one cleans the, the stuff out and cleans the contacts and the other lubricates them for good contact, pun intended. So here are, I also did these, these uh, trim pots. So the biggest issue that I encountered actually was not that at all. It was completely different. It was a mechanical issue. 
and I thought to myself, oh, um, I've spent this time on this and the, the movement doesn't work. I really started to get worried. What would happen is you'd turn the, the needle up and when it would get near mid scale, it would kind of jump to mid scale and stay there. And then it would jump off of it and keep going. So it had this little kind of sticking area where it would just slow down and lag out at a particular point. And um, I did some research online and first thought, well, maybe it's static electricity. These are very sensitive to static. I mean, you can see if I move my hand over this, the needle moves, right? Um, so I rubbed it down with a dryer sheet lightly, and that's supposed to reduce the static, and it actually seems to have toned that, even what you just saw there, down quite a bit. But it didn't fix this sticking issue. So I pulled the face of this meter off and uh, uh, the actual meter movement, which I was able to do even without removing the movement from the case, just by prying along here very gently with the screwdriver. And uh, I got it out and I found an extremely small um, metal filing down in the movement. I'm not sure why I set that down. Right down in there um, around the edge of that half moon arc there was a metal filing and that was indeed what was causing the sticking so now that i've gotten that out <coughs> excuse me um uh, the whole thing works quite nicely uh i'll clean it up a little bit further probably polish this plastic a little bit more I, i'd done some already it, it when it came it was it was quite dirty um polish that some more with some novus 2 scratch remover and uh have fun aligning radios and doing other things that you can do with a vacuum tube voltmeter. So thanks for watching. If you like this, uh, please give it a thumbs up and uh, stick around for other weird and possibly entirely useless electronics related videos. Thanks.